So the first thing to know is what the pelvic muscles control. Pelvic muscles control um, the release of urine from the bladder. So when they weaken, like any muscle can, um, you're gonna lose the, the control for, for what that muscle does. And in this case, it's gonna be urinary control. So someone may leak urine. The reason why pelvic floor muscles may weaken may be um, multiple things, whether it's pregnancy, childbirth, surgery, and that would be prostate surgery for men, that would be a hysterectomy in women, um, also perineal trauma. This can um, happen with people that do equestrian sports or cyclists and simply aging. So all of these can result in pelvic floor weakening and result in um, urine leakage. The pelvic floor muscles are made of the levator ani and the coccygeus muscles. The muscles are attached from the front to the back and the sides of the pelvic bone. The two main muscles that uh, do most of the work are the, the two muscles that compose the levator ani. And that's the pubococcygeus and the iliococcygeus. The pubococcygeus is the larger muscle and it stretches like a hammock from front to back. The iliococcygeus is shaped more like a triangle, but the point would be focused towards the posterior of the back. Kegel exercises were first termed by Dr. Kegel in 1948. He used it as a method to help women after childbirth with urinary leakage. Today we use um, the exercise that we know of as Kegel exercises or pelvic floor strengthening for a variety of different issues that people may have. Um, the principle behind doing Kegel exercises is actually to strengthen the pelvic floor muscles. And what that does is improve function to urethral and rectal uh, sphincters. Kegeling can help um, and, and provide benefits in, in many ways. Of course, what we've already talked about is stress urinary incontinence is the number one thing we use it for. And stress urinary incontinence is the type of incontinence someone has when they cough or they sneeze or they laugh or exercise. So um, strengthening those pelvic floor muscles are gonna help with that. But it can also help with mild fecal incontinence. It can help um, it retrain the bladder muscle Kegeling can also improve sexual function as well for both, both partners. So the strengthening of the pelvic floor can actually um, improve orgasmic function. Um, as also in pregnancy, pregnant women that, that do Kegeling, um, they can condition those muscles. Birthing is easier and they would tear less, so less episiotomies. There's three different ways actually that we can learn um, what muscles to use, isolate and identify those muscles. The most common one is when people start or st stop their stream, um, and that can be done on the toilet, but only when you're trying to identify those muscles. So going forward and doing your routine with, with, with Kegel exercises, you don't want to be on the toilet stopping and starting a flow. But if you actually relax and your flow begins and then you contract muscles to stop the flow, those are the muscles that, um, that, that you're to be contracting for pelvic floor strengthening. Another way you can learn and isolate those muscles is, um, is to, uh, if you feel the desire to pass gas, actually to suppress that, to squeeze and tighten the, the area around the rectum. And that um, is the, the pelvic muscles that you're contracting. A third way people don't um, like, uh, or they're not as um, motivated to do this method, but it, it's possible to be able to identify those muscles if you insert your finger vaginally or in, men, in the rectum and try to tighten or squeeze down those muscles around your finger. The goal is to be able to hold a contraction for 10 seconds and then relax the, contra the, the muscles for 10 seconds. And I wanna point out here that relaxing the muscles are just as important as the contraction itself, so don't rush either one. So the 10 seconds of contracting, the 10 seconds of relax, relaxation, and you repeat that 15 times, three times a day. That actually should be done for 15 to 20 weeks. And ideally, it would be done daily, but no less than two to three times a week. In the beginning, um, you, you may want to reiterate to yourself, I'm doing these correctly. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can either place your hand over your abdomen or on your buttock or your thigh, make sure you don't feel those muscles tighten. 
The other thing you could do is just simply do your kegeling in the mirror and make sure you don't see any movement to those areas. So that kind of ensures that you're using proper technique. Um, another thing to consider is you may be doing this for four to six weeks before you start noticing improvement. So hang in there. But um, it may take up to three months to see a significant change. Many people try to rush this whole process. Um, they try to um, do their repetitions more frequently or hold their contractions longer. All this does is over exercise and fatigue the muscle, which can actually um, cause urinary leakage. So be patient, do your 15 reps three times a day. Um, and another thing that I want to mention is like any exercise, you should continue indefinitely doing these exercises just to be able to maintain and, 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 and hold um, the, the muscle tone that you've already developed with doing your exercises. The, the idea would be five minutes three times a week and that should be enough to indefinitely do these throughout your life. Another tip um, is if you feel abdominal soreness, um, like you've worked out your abdomen or, or, or discomfort in your buttock or thigh, you're probably using the wrong muscles. So during your exercises or just later, um, if you feel soreness, you want to make sure and ensure, ensure that you're using a proper technique. Um, the final thing would be a lot of people tighten up when they do their kegels instead of relaxing and just focusing on those muscles. So make sure you're not holding your breath or um, tightening your chest. Just relax and use those pelvic floor muscles.